is Chris Birch. Thank you so much for having me, Chris. Could you introduce yourself quickly to the listeners of the Rollis podcast? Uh, well, I'm the founder of Modifius Entertainment, which is the uh, British tabletop games company that does games like Acting Cthulhu and Mutant Chronicles. And we did the Thunderbirds board game, Conan and Infinity and others. We've been uh, mentioning Modifius a couple of times because we, we've been to Dragon Meet and uh, a number of your games have been mentioned. One of your employees also has been a, a regular guest, uh, Gary, from oh, uh, yes. Roleplay yeah. Heaven. Yeah. Where are you from, Chris? I'm from a little town called Leamington Spa, or Royal Leamington Spa, in Warwickshire, in England. Sounds fancy. I'm sure <laughs> yeah. Americans would think you are from nobility. Just yeah, like yeah, no, yeah, yeah. We yeah we have like a very neutral accent around there. Why and how did you came to London then? Well, I was in music. I was um, managing or road managing a guy called David Grant, who was like a pop singer in the eighties. And I was like, I'd left college early nineties and um, had started managing a band called That Certain Feeling. Who's yeah, well, bell? no, there's uh, there's another similar band with a similar name, so it's not the one you're thinking about. <laughs> okay, um, but yeah, they we we did some demos with CBS Records, and um, so we I was like kind of trying to get a record deal, and I was I was road managing this guy David Grant, who's like a pop star, uh, going on tour, and, uh, and then I got a job in the music business. I was um, and I came to London to work for a music agency, and we were working with all the big rave bands. And the DJs in the, in the, just as the rave scene was taking off in the UK and I was involved in all the big club nights and, and ended up, um, working for a thing called Universe who did these big sort of, uh, rave music festivals called Tribal Gathering, which is like the first kind of electronic dance music festivals. Well, that sounds cool. You Before the term EDM. <laughs> so you, you've seen a sort of a golden age of London. You know, you've seen yeah, London well, change yeah, quite a yeah. lot also. Yeah. Yeah. It's seen a lot of change. And whilst I was doing Tribal Gathering, I got PlayStation involved in sponsoring the Chill Out Tent. And I eventually left and started working with video games companies doing PR and marketing. And we did a lot of the first of internet PR, you know, getting websites and bloggers and people talking about uh, the games. And it was the kind of first time it had happened, really. And then I got into clothing. I started a video games fashion label called Joystick Junkies. Did that for 13 years and I got, got fed up of t-shirts because I literally had bought the t-shirt <laughs> and then started Modifius. But I'd been a gamer all my life and I started playing Dungeons and Dragons when I was like nine and I played a game called Ogre, the little um, meta game by Steve Jackson. It's a little kind of war game, hex war game. I think it was about 10 and I had um, figured out little war game rules with my mate playing toy soldiers when we were about seven. There's quite a bit of war games uh, yeah, elements in the room around yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we've got our own Acton Cthulhu war game system launching in July. We've got some Infinity miniatures, which are all for the role-playing miniatures for the Infinity role-playing game that we funded during the Kickstarter. And we've got lots more miniature projects coming through as well. So we've got some exciting stuff happening. And we're, you know, we started off as a role-playing games company. We've added board games with Thunderbirds doing Siege of the Citadel, Next, Kung Fu Panda. And um, so there's a lot more board games coming through. And then Next, we're going to, we're kind of adding in a lot more miniatures. So it's, I mean, I just love lots of different games, really. It's like having fun. A regular question I have to my guests is to describe for people who would not be familiar with that hobby, what actually, what would be your, your explanation of what is tabletop RPGs? Well, to non-gamers, I tell them that imagine a TV series and I'm the, I'm the script writer, producer and director and you're the actors. You sit around a table and we have dinner and a few drinks, have a laugh and we tell a story based on my script and, um, you know, you're all characters in the story and then it's a bit like a TV show that each week there's a cliffhanger and next week we'll start again. And I always get non-gamers to come to our gaming nights because I just go, look, come over for dinner. <laughs> and most people want a free dinner. It's an easy, easy way to get people over. And that, then you've got them. That's an excellent transition because our last episode was about food and tabletop. Oh, marketing. right. There you go. So yeah. we, we covered the subject of having yeah. people for dinner. Yeah. We like, we have our, we've got our regular Tuesday night at our house and we have food and, you know, we start playing and, you know, this week we had, jacket potatoes with loads of extras and sometimes we'll do a big pasta or um you know all kinds of stuff and we've got various people who like can't eat 
you know, different foods. So we've got to be, you know, really think about how we cook food and we stop and chat for half an hour and then we start playing again. And so it is a social night. And I think, um, some of the best gaming nights are about, it's not just about the game. It's about the people who get together and the fun you have together and the laughs. And I oh, remember when that, yeah, yeah, last week. Oh my God, that was really funny. So it, it's just, much, it's very much the experience. And, um, you know, that's why, that's why they can be so great. You know, it's, I love video games. You know, I've been a gamer. You know, I had the Atari when I first, you know, when it first came out and then PlayStation. But there's something different about tabletop games that, you know, you're sitting around a table having a laugh, having a few drinks, great food, great company. It's just, you know, there's nothing like it. It's like, and, and it's so easy to get people into that. If you, like I said, if you invite them over for a dinner party, oh, we're going to play a game. Yeah, right then. People, people always try it once. And I've always got loads of non-gamers to take part because once they try it, they have a really good time. Okay, so I didn't know what to put in between uh, to slice up my interview with Chris. And it's Mercifilia's birthday and we're going to have an extravagant day, isn't it? Sure, yeah. What's today on the menu? Now we are at Boro Market getting um, some ancho chilies for a recipe later on in the day. Chicken mole yes. this afternoon. Um, then we're heading off to... Druid Street for uh, an archery class. Yeah. And then we're off to Westfield Stratford for S Captain America. Civil War. Yes. With, with Nala, who was in the first episode. Definitely, yeah. So and then she's joining us back home and we're going to have chicken molly and then party breast dessert and champagne to celebrate my birthday uh, along with Xani and his fiancée uh, yeah. or so girlfriend cook, <laughs> you're gonna cook our first parry breast yes cool 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 <laughs> So you started with Ogre by Steve Jackson? Or? It was that and D&D. &D. Ogre was like my first board game, really. And it was the, you know, it was all part of that hex-based okay. fantasy games, as they were called then, which was sci-fi or fantasy. And it was like £2.99 when it first came out. And it still wow. is £2.99. <laughs> so it's pretty cheap now. Yeah, it was like a few counters and a hex map. And a little tiny rule book. Uh, and it was great fun. And that, you know, paved the way for so many different cool, you know, games. You it's know, so broad what, what you can find in terms of uh, rule-based or more narrative yeah, yeah, narration yeah. based. Uh, as you yeah. say, it's a, it's a whole world of different yeah. sort of experiences you, yeah. you can really uh, I, have. I played everything from Napoleonic war games in 15 mil to, um, you know, storytelling RPG games, card games. I played Magic, you know. All the way, th you know, played through all the classic role playing games, Star Frontiers, Metamorphosis Alpha, Rune Quest, Merp, <laughs> even. Merp. Uh, Middle Earth role playing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very complex. And then Fate, of course. And then I, I created the Star Blazer Adventures role playing game that was out in early 2000s. That was my first game that I made commercially. For Which Cuba one, sorry? Uh, Star Blazer Adventures. It was the first kind of, big commercial release, I guess, for the Fate game system. And um, we did really well with it. I mean, it got nominated for an any, any award. And uh, it's a huge book. It's like 636 pages, I think. Insane amount of stuff in it. 
but I wanted to make a book that you never would need another role-playing book again ever for its system. <laughs> so yeah, it really had everything you needed. So would that be your favorite game then, the Star Blazer? Or? No, um, I had, you know, it was the first game I made. It wasn't my best. Um, hopefully I've got better ones still to come. I've got, I'm working on a board game at the moment, which uh, is actually I've been something I've been working on since I, before I started Modifius, but I've not had the time to work on it. So I'm, I'm uh, getting back involved in that, which is a thing called City of the Dead, which is a little zombie, uh, zombie city scale game. Um, which have some Euro game elements and co-op elements in it. But now I'm like, right, I'm going to do it now, finally. <laughs> it's been on Board Game Geek for like <laughs> four years or something crazy. Any of those older games who you have the fondest memory of? Well, Dungeons and Dragons, of course, we all do. And then yeah, it was just different games over time. I remember the first time my brother was running a game of Metam Metamorphosis Alpha with me and I thought it was Dungeons and Dragons until I discovered what was obviously a laser pistol <laughs> and my my mind was blown, you know, it was like awesome. Having to, you know, have this weird table to figure out how to actually use the thing, you know, you can't just pick it up because you're a, a native who's never seen a pistol <laughs> before. And of course, it usually goes horribly wrong. You shoot yourself in the face or something. <laughs> Yeah, some of those early games were very brutal, you know. They were very unforgiving. I remember my first my first D D character actually died in the first session. The GM gave me a suit of plate armor and we were in the search in search of the unknown, which is the first B one adventure. And there's a you walk, anyone who's played it will know you walk down a corridor at the beginning and there's actually a you think you fight some goblins as a pit trap into the caverns below. And um he gave me plate armor as a first level fighter which is rather generous. Mm. <laughs> and uh, so then I died because I fell through the pit trap and I failed my test to try and get out the armor in time. And that was it. <laughs> so I was gutted and then I'd start again. And I called the character the same name because I was like, no, I want to be. So I, yeah, I've had this character name called Brandon Carter, who was the example character in uh, Star Blazer Adventures. I think I used him again in, Mutant Chronicles and various other games, I've always used the name oh, as uh, as the character for my, if I'm playing a video game or something. So it's just stuck with me. So the second fighter I came back with was, was also Brandon Carter, was <laughs> son of Carter. <laughs> it's like, no, I actually like that name. I don't want to die. So, um, yeah, so they, yeah, those first games are really, there was no kind of like, oh yeah, you know, you, you know, obviously you want the players to survive, you know, make it hard for them, you know, make it feel like they're going to die. But they no, don't, I, but no, you just, yeah, yeah. Them. Metamorphosis, Metamorphosis Alpha was even more brutal. You know, you were dead. You started again. Started, you know, it's a bit like Call of Cthulhu. It's like you expect to die horribly. And yet yeah, in Metamorphosis Alpha, you usually ended up as a pool of slime or <laughs> melted by acid or eaten by a plant, you know. So it was no, no kind of hold barred. It was really hard on the players. <laughs> and it was fun. It was like, how am I going to die this week? Go on then. So. Yeah, uh, I, I like, I like dying. Uh, my, <laughs> my last game session, actually, I decided that my character would be better off dying <laughs> yeah then and it really shocked my game master and my wife and uh, she it's, was a bit, it's a bit like how you know you, you have to have all these really safe soft textures around play playground equipment now. yes yes it's like oh you might fall off and scratch your knee <laughs> that's what that's what we did when we were kids you scratched your knee and you went home crying and then you got a little scar to remember your and you never fell off again well you did actually because you and you would stupid. show your scar to, to your yeah. friends yeah and it was quite normal and it's this whole you know i think i think games have become a bit pc it's like oh no you mustn't hurt the players You know, then they won't want to play again. Of course they do. They love games, you know. It's funny you're offering me a lot of tie in this with episode because uh, you were mentioning PC and I'm trying to prepare um, a special episode about a, a French game called Indomine Satanis. Oh, yeah. And I realized that there was an English translation, an American version. Yeah. But um, I never realized before looking into, you know, those differences between French and uh, gaming in other countries, mm. but the game has been cleaned quite a lot in his English version. Ah, right, yeah. And uh, not only that, and I want to, to do something explaining what the original one, which is extremely disrespectful of uh, beliefs and religions yeah. and this sort of things and violence and in a dark humor way, but still. And mm -hmm. uh, I realized that um, the... So I really wanted to have English players 
to play with us uh, with a, a French game master yeah. running the original setting. Yeah. But I realized that uh, a lot of the players I contacted were actually quite uncomfortable with a lot of the <laughs> topics of the game. So yeah, I, I just yeah, yeah, I yeah. hope I won't shock the the listeners. But it, it's funny to see, as you said, that it's. I understand it on one hand, but on the other hand, this political correctness, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's so different from the early years. It's a, it's, game it's a modern played. version of, you know, the demon on the cover of the monster manual and all the right wing churches were up in arms about it. Cause it's a demon manual. No, it's not. It's a really crap looking drawing of a demon that, you know, compared to modern day art wouldn't stand up. Yes, of course it's, it's a classic because we all remember it, but it wasn't very good. And, uh, you know, and it was not encouraging. It's like playing records backwards. You can't play records backwards because they break. <laughs> you no, know, there are no de- demonic messages on records. You know, try playing your really expensive record player backwards. You won't have a needle anymore. The, the, so I believe the attention like, now is a bit more to video, video games. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. Even things. French ministers as late as last month, they wanted to pass a, uh, new regulations because apparently the, Big issue with education nowadays is children playing video games and being addicted. Yeah, I know. To, it's to it's the same old thing that it's something that people don't quite understand. Uh, like there was the the coffee cup scandal with uh, Grand Theft Auto, where some clever programmer had built in this scene where you can have sex uh, oh, with a, yeah. a girl in the game, and it's really rubbish graphics. And this American senator uh, was outraged by it and was um, talking a lot about it and clearly hadn't actually played the game. And she was going on about how you kill people in the game. And it, you know, it was so obvious. And it's, and it, again, it's this sort of classic, like, I don't understand this and it's really awful. So I'm going to complain about it. And it was, it was just the same thing with rock music in the seventies. Don't understand this new thing, rock music. It must be of the devil. And don't care to look into it. What, what's yeah, actually and it's, you know, about Dungeons and Dragons was the big craze. Suddenly all the kids are doing it and they're all sitting in the, in their bedrooms playing around the table. Actually adults are doing it as well. And it's all these people who don't understand it. And there's all this weird, Monster arts that must be evil, you know, it's like ridiculous. So, um, and, and of course, you know, video games and, and there'll be, you know, there'll be something else. It'll be VR games next. And, you know, I can't so. wait for that. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, at least the attention's away from, from role playing games. But, you know, the good thing is role playing games have matured so much. You know, people have matured. You can have weird, twisted humor, you know, everything from, you know, like alpha complex and paranoia. Uh, you know, through to, you know, there's games like Cult and, um, you know, a lot of the horror games as well. And it, it's, you know, there's a lot of sort of contemporary adult themes and it's because it's grown up as a hobby and it's, mm. um, it's not just about running around a dungeon, mm. killing poor goblins who are just trying to look after their kids, you know, which is actually, <laughs> think about <laughs> it, it's terrible. They, they need a job and then you Yeah, do yeah, you know, they were just like, you know, just protecting their treasure chest and along come these evil, you know, warriors who just want to take all their stuff. But now we actually have quite mature, sensible storylines and, um, and just, just like TV shows that are twisted and filmed. I mean, you look at half the, half the slasher films, you know, like the Saw, um, films, which I hate watching because my imagination's too good. You know, I imagine it all. And, um, you know, there's most role playing games nowhere near as, as gruesome. Well, even or something like Game twisted. of Thrones, uh, we were, we yeah, were... I mean, there's a lot of quite dark. <laughs> And stuff graphic stuff yeah. going on yeah, Go, yeah. going back to uh tabletop rpgs what would you know about any french r- tabletop rpg uh that you, you would like especially or you would know that's a very good question it's There's, a question i realize well there's uh, this brilliant game called acting cthulhu in french <laughs> 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 which sounds <laughs> to <laughs> done. Really? No, um and um Actually, funny. I've been well. I've been in France quite a lot because uh, we work with Devil Pig Games, who do um, Heroes of Normandy, the board game. Which one? Sorry, Heroes of Normandy. It's like a World War Two board game, and they've done. I'm pointing at the one on the wall here, which you can't see. Shadows. Uh, of- we did a, an Acton Cthulhu version of Heroes of Normandy, Shadows of Normandy, and um, and then Sans du Tour have been uh, uh, working on our convert. Well, they've been doing our Acton Cthulhu role-playing game and we're going to announce some more translations <laughs> soon <laughs> um it's nice to officially translate things because some big companies don't bother yeah releasing know, yeah. licensing well, and it's, it's a 
big issue. It's hard to do it yourself. You have to find people who are good at it, you know, because we don't speak French and we don't know the French websites and you've got to go on and talk in French. So it is important that you get a partner that is going to do a good job uh, and pay you <laughs> and, you know, and is respected by the community. There, know, so. Yeah, knows the market yeah. and it's... Uh... The next station is Stratford. Change for the Central Line, DLR and National Rail Services. Hello. Okay, so we are in Westfield Stratford, back with Nala from, Hello. from episode one. <laughs> Remember what we discussed? What, what what did we see? We saw Ant Man. Ant Man. And at the time, I said that there would be something following on to that, and it was. You're so right. Civil War. I don't actually know who's in it. Apparently, everyone's in it. Everyone, everyone, except Daredevil. I wanted Daredevil, but it's not in there. Is um. Deadpool's not in it, right? No, Deadpool is... He's not in X-Men? No spoiler. Okay, anyway. Anyway. Uh, they don't have the license. So we are... As I told you, we are on the uh, extravagant birthday weekend of Krista. <laughs> so Krista, what was the program today? So we woke up and we started making desserts. Yeah. You made scones. Paris-Brest for tonight. We did yeah. our own pralin. We went off to Borough Market to get some ingredients for this afternoon. Then we went some market an, ingredients. Some ancho shillings for and a chicken molly. Then we went to archery class. Archery in, class? Yes. Where? Near Bermondsey. That's so cool. <laughs> did you hit the target? Yeah, I did. I even hit the bullseye. Perfect. Then we had a quick sandwich at Maltby Street. Market, and then we're here and we now with the lovely Nala. Hello. And we're gonna see Captain America: Civil War. Civil War. So my last last time I wa- asked you what you expected from Ant Man. What are you expecting from Civil War today? I am expecting Thor. <laughs> you better be in this movie. <laughs> 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 to, uh, to, He's always funny. He sure Captain is. Captain America is funny. Yeah. Iron Man. As Iron Man and Captain... I'm expecting it to be good popcorn fun. Lots of banter between the characters. Good visual effects. Shut up, obviously. It's going to be great. Um, so are you Team Cap or Team Iron Man? Well, I don't even know what the beef is, so... I mean, either. I'm not sure. It's probably quite different from the comic books. So. I think Iron Man can sometimes be very pretentious, so... Is it not from the last movie where basically Iron Man thinks that he can do just whatever and he just endangered everyone with the last bad guy? <laughs> yeah, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> is that that's the beef? Yeah, I think. Well, we'll see. I guess this is what Marvel Studios have built up to make. Like, so they make all these individual movies about all the characters, so that they can put them together. I've never read the comics. So I don't know. Do you know the big cherry on the cherry on Marvel the Civil War cake? The big license copyright agreement which is gonna do bring a little something to the movie Spider-Man oh yeah I heard Spider-Man's in it but apparently he's, he's shit in it but what? Which, which Spider-Man is it? I don't know a new Spider-Man of course but young, yeah Tobey younger. Maguire doesn't do anything what does he do nowadays? what? Tobey Maguire doesn't do anything these days no but since then we had uh, the other one uh, Andrew Garfield yeah he's the Pierce Brosnan of Spider-Man he's like the best Spider-Man but with the worst movies. I like Tobey Maguire. The second Spider-Man was my my favorite. With, uh, what's his name? Uh, as uh, Come on, I love this actor. Uh, we saw him in a movie with John Lidgo recently. Is he the young no, reporter? Molina. Uh, yeah, Alfred Molina. Don't know who that is. Oh, yeah. If I see a face, I know. Yeah. Okay, let's go for Civil War then. But uh, first we'll enjoy some... Uh, Fresh lemonade and Stella. Cheers. 
sorry, Tommy. You know I wouldn't do this if I had any other choice. But he's my friend. So was I. Or did you move from being a player of tabletop RPG to to working in tabletop RPG? Well, when I first came to London, I met a friend of mine, Stuart, and um, who ended up writing Star Blazer Adventures with. And we met through a mutual friend who'd created this awesome superhero miniatures game, and we'd always play it around his house with loads of their friends. A real big social thing. And me and Stuart just got on well, started playing, we'd play these massive miniatures battles. So we, he, he was like the most incredible painter. So he had this incredible Warhammer 40k collection. So we'd end up playing big games. We'd always go, well, actually, we want to have more figures. So we just simplified the rules. And then he also had, um, uh, for, uh, 40k epic, you know, the really small scale Warhammer 40k. So we wrote our own rule system that meant we could have the most ridiculous giant battle. Uh, we rewrote the Star Wars miniatures game because we had all the, min- the metal Star Wars miniatures and to be able to do huge battles. We just, we'd, we'd play through the night till six in the morning and be eating pizza and, um, and Diet Coke. <laughs> and this is me. And then the other the night before I'm at up till nine in the morning at a techno party. <laughs> so it was a kind of weird time of my life. I was like, one minute I'm, you know, looking after DJs and the next minute I'm playing games all night. It was brilliant fun. And, uh, it's, it's funny, uh, because it reminds me we, there's this interview available online and it's also in a, one of our, there's an extract in the, the episode eight about Dungeons and Dragons of Vin Diesel explaining that he would play Dungeons and Dragons when he was a bouncer. Yeah, that's at right. Nightclubs. Yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. funny how people wouldn't imagine since they've got this picture of being nerds yeah, I tell you, that I, the bouncer or the DJ are actually playing uh, yeah, those games. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, that you have no idea the kind of people out there who are playing Dungeons and Dragons or other role-playing games. I mean, there's all sorts of stars and, and people who just get on with it and play. They don't talk about it. And um, it's like I, I know um, with video games, like, you know, I know some massive tour managers and band members who just go online and play games and they don't tell anyone that they do. And you wouldn't know that you're playing against them, you know, just some dude, you know, <laughs> shooting you. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's loads of people out there playing it. And it's, there's a lot more than I think most people realize. So, uh, but yeah, oh yeah. So me and Stuart, we kept coming up with our own ideas. And then we'd sit there till six in the morning, dreaming up some cool gaming universe. And we came up with a kind of role playing and, um, uh, role playing and war game system called Blaster Array. And we, this was back in like the time of photocopiers and, you know, rubbish computers. So we cut and paste some different art from different games and some artwork some friend of a friend of mine made with our rules and typed it up and, and made this little war game role playing world called Blaster Array. And it was set in a solar system called Modifius, which was an artificial solar system created by this ancient alien race. And they, they took all these slaves from other solar systems. So they had humans and elves and dwarves and trolls who were called different cool names, not dwarves and trolls. And, um, they had this artificial solar system and then they were defeated by another alien race and they abandoned it. And all their technology was driven by psionics. So, you know, everything worked with psionics, but all the poor slave races left behind couldn't deal with it. So mm. they had to rebuild their civilization. And it was all about role playing in that turmoil. And we all said we'd start a games company together and, uh, and we ended up writing Star Blazer Adventures together and Stuart works in IT in, um, in one of the big colleges. And, um, you know, when I started the games company, I thought, Oh, it'd be a great name, Modifius. And when you come up with weird names, it's easy to get the dot com address, <laughs> which is a big thing. So, um, that's how the Modifius ca- name came about. So it's inspired by this great little universe that we first created. And, um, I was actually, I had my t-shirt company, Joyce at Junkies, and I was doing a deal with DC Thompson, who do the, um, uh, a lot of the comics in the UK. So they did the Beano and they did a, this old comic called Commando, which is like a World War II comic. And they did Star Blazer Adventures, these comics that predated 2000 AD. A lot of the same artists worked on them. They were like 70 pages of black and white artwork that told one story, not several stories. So you got the whole story finished in one go and there was like 281 i think 
And um, so I was pitching them, but they had fantastic color artwork on the covers, and I was going to do some T-shirts based on them. And I said to the guys at Cubicle 7, uh, I said, look, why don't you do a role-playing game based on this? Because there's so much artwork, it'd be brilliant for a role-playing game. And they said, yeah, great, why don't you do it? <laughs> so stupidly I agreed and started working on it. <clears throat> and we used the Spirit of the Century Fate mm-hmm. game system. to We rewrote the rules, then wrote all the new rules for spaceships and battles and things and uh it took three years and it was hell and sometimes i wished i'd given up and then you know eventually you get through it and then you go oh god i've got to do the index now (laughs) and all the boring bits at the end and eventually we got it done and got it out and it did really well so that was my transition oh going back actually that that game blaster away array that me and stuart came up with um, the reason we put it together is I was, I was filming in America and I was going to meet Mike Pondsmith from Artel Saurian Games. And I remember taking over this copy going, Oh, Mike, we made a game. <laughs> what do you think? And he was like, he's got this really, really deep voice. He's like, Oh, cool, Chris. I'll check it out, you know. And, uh, and of course, never heard from him. <laughs> he's a really lovely guy. Uh, but I don't think he heart, had the heart to tell us it was the, you know, awful. <laughs> but, um, so that was, you know, that was our first attempt. And then we, you know, just got busy with life. So that's, uh, around 2012, then the, the beginning of Modifuse. Or... Uh, yes. So I had been doing the t-shirts for 12 years, Joyce at Junkies. And I was, um, was in Belarus with my wife, Rita, who's, um, helped me start Modifius, a business partner. And, um, we are, I was kind of bored of the t-shirts, wanted to do something different. Mm. And we were dreaming up ideas. I met a company that made cool plastic tanks in Belarus. And I was dreaming up the idea of doing something with that. And then thinking, well, maybe we could do something, you know, with games or I didn't really know what. And I'd always loved, um, World War II. And I'd always loved Weird War. As a kid, my grandfather had this comic book and books shop in Coventry in the Midlands. And, um, we, um, I always used to get this bag of comics every Saturday. I'd go and help run the shop and I'd come home with like Weird War and G and, uh, Sergeant Rock. And in Sergeant Rock or Weird War, there'd always be a story of some tanks and, you know, zombies and, um, you know, weird Nazis and monsters. I don't know what that could inspire. (laughs) I know, exactly. So at the same time, I'd also read Assault uh, at the Mountains of Madness or uh, Beyond the Mountains of Madness by Lovecraft. And that I love, I've got this thing. I love, uh, I love Metamorphosis Alpha. I love post-apocalyptic stories. I love ancient ruins and mysteries like that. So it really inspired me. And I was like, wow, what if that was World War II? And so I, I kind of came up with this concept of Actung Cthulhu. And at the same time, Sarah Newton came to me with some adventures that she'd been writing for World War II for Cthulhu. So I was like, well, great. Well, let's, let's put this out and uh, we'll put it out under the acting Cthulhu name. I'll publish it. I'll organize it. So I started, uh, Modifius as a fun thing that me and my wife would do in the evenings. And, you know, we met Mikhail, our designer. He's amazing and, uh, got him working on it. And Dim Martin, the artist who's gone on to do all the books. And we, uh, did our first two adventures with Sarah. Um, and everyone was just getting a little percentage and shared the costs and it did really well, promoted it. I mean, it helped that I'd run a PR company before, so I knew how to push it. And, um, it was like, oh, wow, this is great. And then Kickstarter had, had taken off and I was like, oh, you know, maybe I should, you know, kickstart doing some miniatures or maybe the setting books and we'll, you know, and then maybe I could do a day a week doing this instead of the t-shirts, you know. So in the end, we started, we, um, it had been going for about a year doing the PDFs, built up a, a fan base, about a thousand people who'd bought the books and then said, okay, we're going to do a Kickstarter and we're going to do the, you know, Keepers and Investigators Guide. And in my head, I was thinking, well, you know, a few other projects similar had raised about, you know, 10,000 pounds. I thought it'd be great, you know, if we could fund those two books, then we could just gradually make more books and, you know, I could, uh, le- you know, work from home a day of the week and just do that. And of course, we came to do the Kickstarter and it was such a ridiculous success that, you know, we 
raised £177,000, not 10000 and funded 12 books and had this enormous task ahead of us. And so I left the T-shirt company. Oh, wow. wow. Captain America, Civil War. What did you think of that? It was too long. Too long? What? What? It was not enough I did not it. feel bored at all. No, okay, I wasn't bored, but it was... It's two hours and a half. Two nicely rhythm, two hours and a it half. It was very nice. It was, I did not feel the time pad. I had a really good time watching it. I thought it was um, entertaining. It had fun in it. Spider-Man was really fun. He was, yeah. So you like the new actor? No, I didn't like him. I mean, <gasps> come on. Come on. It was, he was a nice comic relief. It was... Like and man, totally needed because but their fight was a bit. The whole time I'm just thinking, guys, can we just sit down? It's just such a manly thing to just keep fighting and fighting until someone's down. It's like, no, just calm down. You know, walk around, take a little walk around the block, get your anger out, and come back, and we'll talk about it. Because well, why would you need to keep fighting? And then, sorry, at the end, can I can I spoil? Oh yeah, okay, spoiler alert. Sorry, spoiler alert. In the end, when it's this guy in the bunker saying, me, 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 look at the video I found. And then it's like, oh my god, I gotta kill him. It's like, yeah, I mean, you all killed a lot of people. Yeah. But no like, one gets excited about, upset about it except for Iron Man. Yeah. Since and then what, it's like, since when does he has on. mommy issues? Yeah. When is... <laughs> like, he oh, never mentioned his mom. Man. <laughs> yeah. uh, sure, that you, you've got a lot of suspension of disbelief, but... Yeah. It's, no, no. it's okay, it's okay. I, I can't think that, okay, he's trouble because Peggy Carter is dead and Sharon Carter has got a very w oddly specific eulogy <laughs> at Peggy Carter. Plant yourself like a tree. <laughs> I'm not looking at anyone, Captain America. Funny thing, that's a thing Captain America says in the comic. So it's directly taken from the comics, but oh, really? Sharon Carter saying that, that sometimes in life you've got to say, no, you move. Which is probably what a lot of uh, Republican libertarian in the U.S. Uh, thought when they were doing stuff which are not good. <laughs> exactly. Uh, um, no, I thought, but in general, I thought it was a, it was a fun film. It didn't take itself too seriously, which was very nice. And uh, but the, um, I mean, the whole exposition at the start was like, yes, yes, we know we kill a lot of people. There's consequences. Like, yes, thankfully you addressed this. Oh, Got by, dragged out a little bit. By the way, uh, General Ross, worst PowerPoint ever. It's like, remember, you killed people. Remember, oh, New yeah. York. Remember, New York. Yes, like, I remember. Yes, we you don't need to show us clips of this. Remember, awesome. Washington. <laughs> yeah. Remember, remember, Sokovia. Sokovia. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about men fighting. Oh, yeah. So, some women are kicking ass in that some movie. Some women, two. Definitely. There's two. There's three. Who's the third one? Sharon Carter. She's not kicking. It. Why? Oh, why she is she briefly special? kicked us? Briefly. And then she got kicked. And then yeah. she was like, "I've got to go now." What? What? What even happened to Scarlett Johansson? Whatever happened to Shield? Is Shield gone now? Oh yeah, for a while. That was in Winter Soldier. You know, yeah. I didn't see Captain America: Winter Soldier. Oh, that's interesting, actually. So you. So I, and it's still, this one was still working. Oh, well, I kind of figured they were buddies from back then. They're all like ancient and. That's when you, you haven't seen Winter Soldier because at the same time, what I thought was really cool with Civil War. Oh. There's a lot of stuff going on which are, um, I would say, earned by the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like Peggy Carter's death. I don't it, even know who Peggy Carter is. Well, I think it's. For people who know the universe, it's sad because it's been going on for loads and loads. Of, there's lots of stuff. But she was only in the Winter Soldier movie because I've never no, seen her. No, she's she's she has her own series. She has her own series. Well, she yeah. just got cancelled now. They got cancelled. Well, got... there's two seasons. She's in Captain America: The First Avenger. Let's anyway. get back on track. <laughs> Thank you. So, Civil War. What, are you excited about Spider-Man? Um, Spider-Man: Homecoming. I don't know. I mean, I've seen the Spider-Man. What else is there to tell about Spider-Man? I think the guy does a good job. He's really funny. 
in the all action sequences. He brings great comic relief and he's really funny. What? Don't know if I want to watch the movie. It's like, oh, Spider Man. I mean, what else is it? Well, another Mary Jane, and then he's like, whatever. And now he's into no, retro computers. Yeah. <laughs> Been there, done that. Like, Got the t shirt. <laughs> exactly. Come like, on, they just they rebooted twice. Come on, stop it now. I anyway. know. It's like Batman. Like, we've just seen Batman, and now you're making a whole new Batman. Yeah. Like, ugh, I'm just tired of it now. But it's different because now Spider Man's gonna be. With all the others in the same universe. Oh, I don't. New. I think it's like chewing bubble gum you chewed for mm, three hours. Move again. over. Ant Man's coming. So. Ant Man. Yes, I want to see Ant Man. Yeah. I don't want to see Spider Man. We want to see Ant Man. Ant Man. <laughs> so why are you satisfied with the uh, Ant Man contribution? Ant Man, or should I say, spoiler alert, Giant Man. Oh yes, that was cool. Yeah, but he's very slow when he's a giant. Yeah, but he's still pretty good. Yeah. I mean, he, they destroyed a lot of airplanes yeah. and a whole airport. That's and expensive. Airplane, yeah. It's very expensive. I don't know if the German government would allow that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We just spent millions on everything, you know, you destroyed. I, I totally agree with the storyline that it's like the world's like, thank you, Avengers, but you need to be put into check. But then in the end, they had a really bad system of like. <laughs> Checking out the backstory of their so-called <laughs> UN people, like who are these people? This guy can just come in and question the Winter Soldier. Did you check him out? Yeah. How did Tony point. Stark find out all this? And the UN didn't. And they were like, "Yeah, you should be in a high security prison with him, asking him questions." Made no sense. So, if it could be any superhero that we saw today, which one would it be? But is it about having the power or being the character? Being the character. Okay. Being the character. So, which one do you feel attuned with? <laughs> the cat man. Oh, I thought it was because like, oh, it's Catwoman. Well, his it's costume was very feminine. I was his really... His costume made him look camp. It was, but it was like a strong camp. It was like a... I was just wow. totally... But it was funny. He had like claws and I then know. this necklace. I was like, in the beginning, it was like... Is this a woman? No, I can't see any breasts. It, yeah, it must, it, it's, it's a man? Because well, why your man would be a cat? He looks like a cat woman. <laughs> it's not a cat, it's a... Panther, yeah. No, then uh, no black yeah. panther. Arr. So it's who would you, your question, who would you be? I would be... Um, well, I would be S- Samantha. What's Samantha? Samantha? Um, huh, <laughs> Natasha? What's her name? Samantha. <laughs> There's not sex in the city. <laughs> <laughs> Natasha. Natasha. Natasha Roman of the Black Widow. Yeah, Black Widow. Black Widow. Samantha. Because actually, she, she doesn't have any superpowers, really. She just, she's just awesome. Yeah, she's not a weirdo. No.
knowing that quite a number of Kickstarters behind or ongoing or ahead yeah. of you, uh, Mutant Chronicles, was that a So that was the second year, uh-huh. Mutant Chronicles, and we'd been talking to them about taking on the rights. And I'd loved Mutant Chronicles when the game was out, the, the role-playing game and the board games they had, Blood Berets and Siege of the Citadel were out in the 90s and had collected them then. And so when they said, oh, would you like to reboot it? I was like, wow, that would be amazing. So it was like a dream come true. And so we did a Kickstarter of that and that did really well. And and then as we were doing that, we started talking to ITV about Thunderbirds. And because, uh, you know, I was a massive fan of Thunderbirds from when I was a kid. And uh, I thought, well, it's, it's got to be a co-op game. You know, you're working together as International Rescue. Well, who's the best at co-op games? Matt Leacock. So I emailed him out of the blue and said, hey, Matt, you know, would you be interested in talking about a project called Thunderbirds? And we met him at Essen and he was, and he didn't really know what it was. He said, oh, you know, I've checked it out, you know. And, um, so we talked and said, well, look, this is what we're kind of thinking of. And he went home to, and watched it, said he'd watch it with his kids, which I knew would mean he'd, we'd win him over because it's fantastic and kids love it. And, uh, and so then we did the Kickstarter for that last year, beginning of last year. Any uh, French translation of, in French, what's called the Sentinelle de l'air? Yes. Well, there is. Yeah. We did. F- We did do a French version as part of the Kickstarter. That's much later than um, the English version, but they've just finished all the translations and it's going into production. Nice, nice. Yeah, so um, that uh, should be um, should be out in a couple of months, which is great. Well, we'll be with backers in a couple of months, and um, and then uh, we signed up Infinity, the, uh, the big miniatures game. We pitched the course belly, the owners of the. Uh, the miniatures game in Spain and said, look, we'd love to do a role playing game based on the world because uh, just gorgeous miniatures that just, they're, you know, they're really nice. You know, there's yeah, some yeah. Hanging they just the jump out at you as role playing figures. Yeah, I was considering uh, getting some for my uh, Star Wars uh, D6 ah, yeah. game. Yeah, because, cool. Uh, yeah, they're great. They could be, uh, they could be really yeah. nice. And so we did the Kickstarter for that, um, in, um, October and that was a huge success. It's the biggest one we've had, and that's so that's ongoing. And then uh, we were really late. We were supposed to do a Kickstarter of Conan last year, and um, so we ended up finally doing that in February this year, and that was an even bigger success. Oh, that's so, what I told because when you yeah. said it was your biggest success, I was like, wait a yeah, minute, yeah, yeah. Conan? So, um, and we've got different teams working on all of them, and um, so that you know, no one. They're not getting delayed because oh, I'm trying to do that work. Um, I mean, the great thing is we've finished. I mean, we delivered all the Acton Cthulhu stuff. We've delivered all the Thunderbird stuff. We've um, delivered most of Mutant Chronicles. There's four more books to come, one more final wave. Uh, so that's great. That'll be done in the next couple of months. So, you know, it's really fantastic when you see it's so much work and then you finally see it delivered. And it's a really amazing feeling. It's, um, I must say it's amazing. I, I got this library uh, right just next to me uh, with all, with all these books. Yeah. Uh, I do for my work report. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, on InDesign, but they, they look very nice, but they're, yeah, they're yeah. fancier than most Thanks. engineering practices out there. But uh, hmm. uh, uh, just give me a, a sort of a little idea of the amount of work this must represent. Oh, it does, yeah. And there's so many people involved and there's so much checking and um i mean it's unbelievable the amount of work uh, that goes into all the books but um it's great fun i mean we love role playing games and because it is about storytelling and each new role playing game we do is is a whole new world to explore and that's why we've launched these living campaigns this week mm-hmm. Modifius frontiers and so that's four living campaigns one for acting cthulhu mutant chronicles and then next year will be infinity and conan So where we bring the whole community together, it's free to sign up. You'll get a free adventure every month. And if you report the results of the campaign in a very, very simple way, it's like five questions, yes or no, um, then you affect the way the campaign is written. And at the end of the year, we release the book and you'll be credited as part of the team that created it. Which shaped the the direction of things. Yeah, yeah. I hope you won't go the uh, Legend of the Five Rings way because it 
It went a bit out of uh, control. Uh, Today, <laughs> I remember. It, it was it was different. Uh, from what I gather, um, they have a card game also, which mm -hmm. is quite famous. And what they did is that they had a big tournament for the card game, and the winner of the card game could decide a couple or one key event in the world, which was also the world of the, the role-playing game. It games. was a bit wacky. And uh, there were a bit of, uh, <laughs> yeah, very uh, oriented decisions like right. uh, uh, scorpions took over this clan and they changed completely the world. And, uh, wow. I, I never played that far, but uh, yeah, that yeah, one yeah. a bit... Uh, yeah, you have uh, to be careful that you kind of keep the world as people expect it to be but make it really exciting within that framework i think so well, it's nice to bring the community to to develop content and or yeah. influence it uh, mm. so it's great talking about community dragon meat that's something else that you yeah. sort of seize the rain uh, at the moment uh, yeah and it, that's something which keep being mentioned in the the podcast as well so hmm. what what actually uh happened what is the, the dragon meat adventure uh, from well side? i mean they got offered to me um the people who were running it before i think wanted to move on they were too busy and um i knew that we could do a good job um promoting it and uh, i think we doubled the number of traders and doubled the number of visitors in the first year and then we kind of um stayed in the same venue last year we're moving to a new venue this year and uh, to kind of grow it even more. And uh, nice. I wanted to make it a, just a great tabletop event for the UK, but obviously particularly for London, because um, that's its home, and uh, and to give people here, because there's so many gamers in London. Did and you around, used around London. To, to attend Dragon Meet uh, before? I went a couple of times, yeah. And and I was, obviously, when I was kind of helping Cubicle 7, I was part of their stand and uh, a couple of times and just worked at the show, helped out. So it was nice to see it, you know, seeing it grow over the last few years. I think it went to one of the really early ones um, in the 90s. Um, so, yeah, it's been fantastic. And obviously, I've, I've got a lot of experience. I've been doing events through the 90s, doing, you know, from dance parties to uh, PR events. So it's, you know, doing the event was actually quite easy. It's, you know, that's probably one of the easiest things to do. Uh, and we've got a great team involved, like John Dodd, who's, who also is involved in UK Games Expo, looks after all the, um, GMs and, and organized play. Yeah, we've got a lovely team involved who put it together every year. So um, are you considering having a DJ in a dance room next year? No, no, no. I think <laughs> <laughs> we did. Funnily enough, I've got a friend who's a DJ. He played some music for us last year, but, um, because it's a one day event. So it's not really, you get some people playing late into the evening, but, um, People there want to play games. They don't want to, you know, have loud music playing. So, so you're looking into doubling uh, because I think it doubled between 2013 and 2000. Yeah, it went from about 800 people to about 1600. And so you're looking into doubling that uh, further. Uh, we, oh yeah, I mean, we wanted to keep growing it. Um, we're not in a rush to grow it. So this year it's about the same size, but if we sell more space, we can add more space in the venue because they've got lots of convention rooms as well. Nice. And it's more light. It's got lots of uh, daylight there and it's, it's on three different tube lines. Cool. So it's quite handy. Can so. it be mentioned already? Not yet. No, okay. Haven't signed the contract yet. Let's not jinx it. <laughs> yeah, no. Cool. Well, I think the, that's, uh, that's it. Actually, we covered pretty much, uh, everything. I guess then we are moving into the final section of the the podcast, uh, which mm -hmm. is a, an homage to another podcast called The Weekly Planet. Yeah, and that section is called "What Are You Reading? What Are You Gonna Read?" <laughs> okay, but it doesn't have to be books. Actually, it's about yeah. whatever media it could be uh, a TV show, could be music or things. You've just recently listened or checked mm -hmm. out, and what things you are about to have a look at so, sure. so what are you reading what am i reading uh what i'm reading uh i haven't actually got it here i can't remember the title there's a really good business book <laughs> by uh, uh an entrepreneur but um i'm also reading the princess of mars again the john carter books because we're doing that role-playing game coming up next i read it i've read it loads of times but it's a classic it doesn't get doesn't get old um i'm watching i've just finished watching the shannara TV series. Oh, is it any good? I haven't checked yeah, it Yeah, it's okay. It's, I quite like how they've done the post-apocalyptic story. And I, I read the, pre, well, the prequel books that came out a couple of years ago that gets you to that point where the kind of humans get defeated and, and then it's, it all starts again with the elves. 
it's okay. It's a bit kind of, it's got a bit too much sort of, uh, lustful young teenagers <laughs> who, you know, happens to be the queen of the owls or the princess of the owls and the, you know, the man, the young hero. So it's a bit teen romance, but it's kind of fun. Uh, but, um, I'm just, uh, waiting to watch the, um, been saving the new, uh, Game of Thrones episodes to mm. watch. So don't tell me anything. <laughs> yeah, no, about that, actually, let's spread the word. Uh, people have been very respectful. <laughs> yeah, this I know. Season Amazing. Yeah. Of things. I've been spoiled everything, even by people who are role players and usually on Facebook, they are respectful of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We have a, we have a rule in the office that, you don't don't talk about Game of Thrones <laughs> until everyone's seen it. Yeah, I've been rude every single episode so far. Every cliffhanger, uh, uh, I was told what no. what they were so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, mean, I, I can pretty much guess, but so anyway, so um, that's coming up, and um, uh, I, I tend to like you know whole series. So uh, I've been watching Arrow as well. Oh well, it's good fun. Actually, my what are you reading has been this week. I've been. Catching up with uh, DC Legends of Tomorrow. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which is, I would not defend that show as being something extremely <laughs> good. But I just love Wentworth Miller, the uh, Captain yeah. Cold, uh, uh, yeah. Leonard Snart. And actually, yeah. I've read, uh, it might interest you, it's not confirmed, but for season two, they're, they're going to change the team each season. And in season two, it's likely they will have Sergeant Rock. All oh, right, cool. There. Wow. So That'd that, be awesome. that would be that would be quite nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I quite like the the CW uh, happy go lucky take on especially mm-hmm. I I've been more uh the Flash uh yeah. follower. Yeah. Um uh, but uh I, I was definitely uh, people have been asking Civil War or Batman vs Superman and I mm, I haven't seen either yet. So um, Me neither, but I'm yeah. already more I'm uh, the Flash and Supergirl team up. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Uh, cool. Great. So, and uh, what my own, uh, am I going to read? What am I going to read? I'm I'm still reading. I keep, since I started this show, I mentioned stuff which I never finished, mm-hmm. like the Cold War, um, uh, no, Cold City uh, yeah. role-playing games. Yeah. And I'm still in the middle of reading, um, rereading and trying to prepare a game session of a game called Odyssea, a little mm-hmm. uh, indie French yeah. game about yeah. uh, playing the, the Odyssey. Uh, but yeah. really, uh, it's about drama it's about uh you must come up all the time with the worst thing which could happen yeah to all to all the characters so great so that's about it awesome so yeah uh that's it uh thank you so much Chris, thank you for yeah. having me it's been great fun and uh well good luck for for your your next kickstarter and on going Thanks kickstarter uh, yeah i'm sure they, they go smoothly uh, yeah the others <laughs> we hope yeah thanks very much Bye. bye-bye This episode included Super Psych Birthday Crew by the Danimals, Weirdos Everywhere by the Prefab Messias, and of course Solta o Franco by Bonded Oral. All songs available on freemusicarchive.org. This episode was a, a bit of a mismatch. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do send your comments via email at rollistpod.com at gmail.com that's Rollist with an S or via Twitter or any other means if you would have preferred an uninterrupted interview of Chris or if you would like to listen to an even longer version of our exchanges about civil war with Nala you'll find both of those through our Patreon thank you very much to The Green Korean for your review on iTunes those reviews are extremely helpful to reach more people and find more listeners for the Rollist podcast so thank you very much and finally, feel free to join us to our monthly drink in London, Blood Drinks and Dice. See you in June, and in the meantime, have good games. Nós é tipo bem Jesus, todo mundo a gente ama Ainda mais se for gatinha, rola até levar pra cama A gente topa tudo, sapatão e bigodudo Na hora do piriri, cai em mim outra vesti Vai batuque! Rolê! 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 Solta o frango e vem com a gente Rolê! 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 Solta o frango e vem com a gente
What did you get there? <laughs> Creme caramel donut from um, Red Ahead Bakery. You've been looking for those for a while? Yeah, they're all over Instagram. <laughs> Happy birthday! <laughs> yes! Je ne vais pas tout garder, t'inquiète.